Watching PA Harness Week. Thanks for joining us as we gear up for another week of racing's fastest paced half hour. I am your host, Britt Purdy, joined as always by racing's first lady, Heather Vitale. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much. I cannot believe it's our second to last show. Uh, oh my gosh, after this one more? I don't want to think about uh, it. I know, I don't either. But for people that are tuning in late in the season, you came to the right one. Absolutely, it's going to be a good one. So let's kick it off and show everyone what we're going to see on today's show. It was a historic week at the Meadowlands in this year's Hambletonian. The details on what went down, plus Party Girl Hill won just a week ago in the Adio Volo. Can she come right back to stay perfect at Pocono? That race is on deck, and Wiggle It Jiggle It was back at Harris Philadelphia on the track. We'll show you how he did. And how about his baby brother? Let's try to wiggle again, who was in qualifiers for the first time. Heather also has the story from the day he was born. And racing's top pacing mare, Chartain, was trying to repeat her victory from last year in the 2020 edition of the Lady Liberty. Those stories and so much more, all next on PA Harness Week. Last Saturday was a huge day for the sport. It was Hambletonian Day at the Meadowlands in New Jersey with a star-studded card of standard breads all in attendance. Now we've got three races to show you from the day and we'll kick it off with the centerpiece. That is right, the $1 million Hambletonian. Now it is for three-year-old trotters. Usually the race is made up of all males. Every once in a while we see a female in there. This year, we actually had two females, including the two to five favorite Ramona Hill starting from post five. She won her elimination in spectacular style. There's no way to even explain it more than that. And then also the second choice is the number one ready for money. We're going to throw it up to announcer Ken Workington for the call. Solid pace here. And now Ramona Hill by three quarters of a length. Ready for money's breathing down her neck on the outside. Ranging up his back of the net, threatening now third on the outside. 352 gives way on the inside. Capricorn is looking for fourth on the outside and looking for more and gaining. But at three quarters, it's Ramona Hill. The ball's in her court in the Hamiltonian. 122 and 2, 27 and 4, third quarter speed. Ramona Hill and Andrew McCarthy, they're clear by two, two and a half. Ready for money, takes dead aim on the outside, but he's full out. Back of the neck is third, Amigo Volo fourth. Ramona Hill, Andrew McCarthy five today. Ramona, oh, Ramona Hill takes the Hamiltonian. Ramona Hill with another incredible performance, this time in 150 and one. Actually, that equaled the stakes record first set by her daddy, Muscle Hill, in 2009. Now, it was kind of a different sort of winter circle with the whole COVID thing going on, a lot of masks, social distancing. However, the energy winning a race like this was still Hop in. We want to say congratulations to the owners, Brad Grant, Crawford Farms Racing, Robert LeBlanc, and In the Gym Partners. This was the first Hamiltonian win for trainer Tony Alanya and for driver Andrew McCarthy. Let's hear what they had to say about this milestone win. You know, she's very much like a thoroughbred. She doesn't require the work or the starts to be at her best. And, you know, Andy's done a phenomenal job at driving her. He's got all the faith in her in the world. And, you know, you put those two, a confident filly and a confident driver, ain't much you can't get done. The adrenaline you get from winning a race like this, as soon as I cross the wire, my, uh, I, I, it, it, words can't explain it, you know. It's, it's just an amazing event and uh, such a privilege to be able to be involved and uh, let alone win it. Now on to the female counterpart race. This is the $600,000 Hamiltonian Oaks for three-year-old trotting fillies. With number seven, Sorella, who's the four to five better's choice, and also getting a lot of support is number 12, Hypnotic AM, who starts from the second tier. And it's Sorella and Yannick Jingra in front by three. Hypnotic AM and Brian Sears has her going well on the outside, trying to reel in that leader. And kicking in late is Pen M to the inside, but it's Sorella. She is home free. Sorella and Yannick Jingra on the Hamiltonian Oaks. 
Sorella trotted from wire to wire in 151 with a Yannick Zingra in the bike. Now, this is another daughter of Muscle Hill. She's trained by Nancy Tactor. This is Nancy's first Hamiltonian Oaks win. Her dad, Hall of Famer Jimmy Tactor, has won the Hamiltonian Oaks a record eight times. And for Yannick Zingra, this is his sixth Oaks victory. And we want to say congratulations, of course, to the owners of Sorella. She is owned by breeder Elmer Fannin, who owns her with his son, Brent, and with Crawford Farms Racing. Awesome. Well, we did promise a Hamiltonian trifecta, so still on this card, we'll take a look now at the $177,000 Lady Liberty for pacing mares. And the favorite is none other than the 2019 Harness Horse of the Year, and notably the 2019 Lady Liberty winner. It is Shark 10, and she's coming off a track record performance at Plain Ridge Park. Chardon tried to give them the slippage. Chardon by two. War we you butte on the outside. Major occasion needs more. It is Chardon up sprinting them. Chardon, major occasion on the inside. Not today. She is a wonder from down under. The New Zealand native of Chardon wins the Lady Liberty for the third year in a row. This time she paces in 158-2 for her trainer, Jim King Jr. We have a major occasion finishing second, and then Stonebridge Soul finishes third. Chartin now a winner of about $2.3 million. Congratulations to her owners. That's Richard Pellucci, Joanne Looney King, and her driver, Tim Tietrich. Awesome. Well, we do need to take a quick break, but when we come back, we've got lots more exciting racing from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. Party Girl Hill was back on the dance floor, and by that, I mean she hit the track. Can she keep up the win streak? It's all ahead. The unbeaten one, Party Girl Hill, with one quick brush takes over. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier, and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer, and you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Pennsylvania is sort of the pinnacle of standard bred breeding. The best stallions stand in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has what I consider to be the premier racing and breeding program in North America. Pennsylvania breds are worth a lot of money compared to other states because of the races they can be in. Many farms have moved into the state because of our program. This is the creme de la creme where the top horses are being bred and being raised. Welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week Racing's fastest paced half hour, and things are about to get even faster. Our race of the week from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono is from the card on Saturday, August 8th. This one is race number eight. It's a co-feature pace of the night worth $14,000. Number two, Joe Star of Mia has been racing at Yonkers recently. Now, number three, Mind Trip is the favorite, but he's taking a step up in class. Number five, Warren Munn starts for owner, trainer, and driver Kevin Wallace. Send it up to Jim Bavilia for the call. Fractions continue to be rapid as it's still our star of Mia and it's still our, it's our Corelli sweeping up wide. Still in the pocket there is Warren Munn. Top of the stretch, Joe Star of Mia trying to find more, but our Corelli is almost even. Inside up comes Warren Munn. It's our Corelli, Joe Star of Mia, and Warren Munn. Slight lead, Joe Star of Mia, Joe Star of Mia. Joe Star of Mia wins by a neck in 150 with Simon Allard at the controls. Now, not not only is this his first win of the season, but it's also a lifetime mark for the seven-year-old. Picking up the play spot was Warren Munn, and then just a half length back taking third was our Corelli. Now staying at Pocono for this one, still on that Saturday, August 8th card. This one is race number 10. It's the other co-feature pace of the night also with a purse of $14,000. Now getting the most support at the betting windows is number three, All You Need Is Faith, who's racked up four wins out of 11 starts this season. And number two, Bo Mock has the fastest mark this year of any horse in the group. The lead a half length for All You Need Is Faith. George Knapp asking for more. Three quarters, 122 and 4, 27 and 1 hung up in the back. All You Need Is Faith being hounded by Dreams Beach. 
Beach Boy. J.J. Flynn getting ready to come off that cover. Beaumont is still there in the pocket. Around the turn to the top of the stretch. All you need is faith. Just a little bit more daylight now between him and the pursuit. Beaumont dives to the inside. Room at the pylons also for Twin B. Tough enough is coming up strong. It's all you need is faith. Twin B tough enough with momentum. All you need is faith. Twin B tough enough. Won't get there. All you need is faith. It was another super close one with all you need is faith. Getting to the wire first in 150 and 4 for leading Rainsman. That's George DePolitano Jr. Of course, that New Zealand native is trained by a New Zealand native, and that is Nifty Norman. Twin B tough enough came up the inside and took second, and there for third was Bomock. Staying at Pocono now, but this time it's a Sunday race. This one's from the Sunday, August 9th card. It's race number five. It is a Pennsylvania Sire Stakes event for three-year-old pacing fillies. This is the first division of two with a purse of over $93,000. Number three, Lion Sentinel is the favorite and the richest with almost a million bucks in the bank. And number six, Rocknificent coming off a big win and a lifetime best. It's tightening up up front, but Lion Sentinel leads three quarters, 124 even, 28 and two, third panel. Middle portion of the race, relatively soft here. Teetrick rated well. Lion Sentinel trying to turn it on now. On the outside is Drama Act, still with that pocket trip. Rock Nifson further back. Alexis is beach fourth. Top of the stretch. Now Teetrick asking from Lion Sentinel. Out of the pocket, Rock Nifson bearing down on her. It's Lion Sentinel, still a slight lead. Rock Nifson is closing well. Lion Sentinel, Rock Nifson, Rock Nifson up in the nick of time. Rock Nifson gets a great trip, ends up winning and 150 and four with Scott Zeron at the controls. This is a daughter of Captain Treacherous, who is trained by Hall of Famer Linda Toscano, Lion Sentinel. That's last year's divisional champion. She was just a neck back for second. Alexis Beach took home third. And still at Pocono and still Sunday, August 9th. This time, let's take a look at race number 10. It's more PA Sire Stakes. This one for three-year-old pacing fillies. It is the second division of the two. The one everybody has their eye on is number two, Party Girl Hill. She's the overwhelming favorite at one to five, going into this with a five for five win record. Party Girl Hill up by a length, done, not asking for a scintilla from her. And now it's Baby You Are the Best, third of now moving first over for David Miller, trying to corral the leader. Good spot in the pocket still for Marlo Hanover. Jingra caught the cover there with JK First Lady. She's two back and forth. Inside fifth is a should have been a TD, and Guy Waterhouse still in it as the trailer on the outside. The lead a half length for Party Girl Hill, three quarters, 122 and two, 27 and three, third panel. Party Girl Hill fending off Baby You Are the Best. Here comes a three wide move from JK First Lady. Marlo Hanover is two back on the inside. Top of the stretch. Party Girl Hill leading by three lengths now. Move over, Paris Hilton. Move over, Lindsay Lowen. There is a new party girl in town. Party Girl Hill now six for six in her career. She goes even faster this time in 149 flat. She makes it look so, so very easy. We've got Dexter Dunn in the driver's seat for trainer. Chris Ryder finishing second four lengths back was JK first lady and then third taking home the show money was baby you're the best wow what a way to pick up the energy in the show and unfortunately we do need to throw the brakes on but still ahead we will race to Harris Philadelphia we've got sheer speed on the way including an unbelievable long shot to tell you about plus wiggle it jiggle it is back on the track for qualifiers as was his little brother let's try to wiggle again and Heather's gonna take us back to the day he was born a baby foal Come on, you don't want to miss it. The world is full of compromises, but not here. Not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. In the world of standard bread racing, only one name is synonymous with this kind of success, this kind of history, this kind of greatness, this kind of legacy, and this kind of unparalleled promise for tomorrow. Proud of our past, excited about our future. You know the name. That one name, Hanover, the greatest name in harness racing. Welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week, and it is time now to bring you right here to Harris, Philadelphia. 
our race of the week from Harris, Philadelphia is from Sunday, August 9th. It is a feature pace of the day. It was race number eight and it's worth $14,400. Now seven out of the eight horses in here won their most recent start, but the better's fave at odds of seven to five is number four. Respect our flag and let's send it up to Mike Bozich for the call. That's the near three quarters inside Lion Steel by three parts. Rock the doubles grinding up on the outside. Respect our flying Titans down third. Slick Tony slightly gaps off cover fourth. Caviar Reagan looks for racing room fifth. Three quarters, 122 and three. It's still Lion Steel looking for his second straight. The outside Rock the doubles at the wheel. Inside Respect our flag awaits clearance. They straighten away for the stretch drive. It's Lion Steel. Respect our flag's going to try to get him up the inside. Rock the doubles still grinding. Mid stretch Lion Steel. Respect our flag up the inside's going better. Respect our flag takes the lead. Respect our flag makes his third straight trip to Victory Lane at this time with a nice trip and a 150 mile. The four year old was guided to victory by his regular driver, Joe Bongiorno. For Joe's sister, the trainer, Jen Bongiorno, finishing second was Rock the Devil, and then Lion Steel picked up third. Oftentimes in our OMG segment, we'll show you a gritty down to the last step battle because they often make us say OMG, but so does a fat paycheck. So with that said, let's take a look at this one from Harris, Philadelphia on Sunday, August 9th. It is race number four, claiming handicap for Pacers with a price tag of 20 to 25 grand, racing for a purse of $12,000. Now be prepared for the show me the money payout. Stream out loud in front by a half a length. The outside record machine now really carms into the margin up to take on the leader. Three quarters, 123 and one. Let's chase the dream is right in behind this battle. Third, over to the outside, fourth with clearance now quick as a trick. Room at the end for Brock the Rock to save ground. It appears he's got some go as they straighten away for the stretch drive. On the outside, record machine. Dream out loud digs in. Here comes the upset minded Brock the Rock on the far outside. Let's chase the dream. Brock the Rock, record machine. Let's chase the dream. Right is down to the the finish it's tight for win did Brock the Rock get up at 85 the one Pink Floyd sang about money ABBA sang about money and you better believe that the supporters of a Brock the Rock were singing a sweet tune when they went in to cash their tickets hundred and seventy three dollars and eighty cents for a two dollar win wager the horse wins in 152 he is trained by michael moffitt and driven to victory by russell foster and we caught up with russell to find out about this long shot and a little about his career well brock the rock with a big payday the fans were obviously psyched what was it like during that race oh, it was kind of surprising like he gave a good effort the week before so i knew he'd probably get a check but didn't really plan on winning, but the trip worked out great. We could just kind of slid up the inside there, and he had a good kick coming home. Awesome. And for people who may not know, how did you get into the horse racing industry? How did you get started in the sport? Uh, I was just born into it. My grandfather started racing back in, like, 1980, and that's really all I've ever known. I didn't take much of an interest in doing any other career. That was all I ever wanted to do. You've had a lot of success in other states, and obviously you're young. Uh, what are your goals? Uh, I'm not a big goal setter. I just kind of like to just show up to work every day and just do the best I can. And as long as I'm providing for my family, that's good enough for me. Each Tuesday here at Harris, Philadelphia, we have qualifying races. So that just basically means that these are events to prep the horses for the races that have a purse on a regular card. Now, this past Tuesday, there were a couple horses there everybody had their eyes on. That, of course, was none other than 2015 horse of the year wiggle it jiggle it he was qualifying on this day and he won in 153 and one but there was also his baby brother let's try to wiggle again who made his very first appearance at the track he finished second in his qualifier pacing in 156 flat and i got a chance to talk with a montreal teague about both of these horses he knows very well First, let's talk about the legendary Wiggle It Jiggle It. He's had some time off here and there with his racing career, but yesterday we saw him qualify. How'd he do? He was really good. Uh, he surprised me. Just left out of there and sat third. Um, I wasn't really trying to grab the lead too too quick just because uh, I want to see how he's going to be on the on this kind of track instead of just being at Harrington. But uh, he'll be racing at Harrington Monday, and I was very impressed with the last quarter in 26-4. 
You know what I love is that we still get to see him race. I know a lot of people are like, why is he not retired and turned out? But he's not happy that way, is he? No, no. As long as he's uh, got his ears perked up and he loves what he's doing, he's going to keep on staying out on the track. Love it. Okay, now his baby brother. Let's try to wiggle again. I love it because your dad actually drove him in the qualifier. Yeah, we had two in the same race. One was Clyde's horse, and Dad had uh, let's try to wiggle again. So um, I threw Dad a bone and gave him the better one. So how did he do? What did your dad say? We know he was second, but what did your dad say when he got off the bike? Uh, he was impressed with him. He really likes him, but I didn't really get a good chance to talk to him because I had 14 out of 14 qualifiers. So I was like bang, 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 off on uh, every single race. So I was running around pretty good. Not only am I a huge Wiggle and Jiggle it fan, I mean, like, who isn't, right? <laughs> but also his baby brother holds a very special place in my heart because I was there to see Let's Try to Wiggle Again being born. And guess what? I have the video to prove it. It is 1.18 in the morning, and I'm trying to find Tommy. Where you at? Is this Mozzie? This is Mozzie. <gasps> oh my gosh, she had the baby. And it's a boy. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, welcome to the world. All right, so here we are in the stall with Mozzie Hanover, who is the famed broodmare, the mommy of Wiggle It Jiggle It. And this is Wiggle It Jiggle It's new brother. And who is it a half brother or full brother? Full brother. Oh my goodness, this is a full brother. Full brother. And look at he has the wiggle it jiggle Dude, it. Star. <laughs> yes, yeah, star. Look at him, my god. So what number is this for Mozzie? This is number four. She's like a pro. Look at her. She's just like <laughs> was licking him all uh dry and oh, oh my goodness he hasn't even stood yet has he no <gasps> all right so when do we expect him to stand within two hours and when i called you her water had literally broke and it was probably 10 minutes after that i got him out so she was bred oh. when because she's a little overdue now yeah she was due march 12th okay so as far as knowing when she's giving birth. Let's get the little scoop on that. Everybody in the Teague stable has monitors everywhere, right? Pretty much, yes. 245 now. And the little guy's trying to stand with your help here with those long legs. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Come on, buddy. Try again, huh? I'll try again. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, oh, come on. So this is typical, right? So tomorrow oh, yeah. round one, it's been an hour and 45 minutes and... Yeah. All right, Tommy, thank you for having me. Oh, no problem, Heather, thank you. <laughs> okay, and good luck to you, you big mama. You're such a pro. And... To that little baby, we won't disturb him. We will see you in the winter circle. Wow, that is just unbelievable. That is so cool. I know, and I have to admit that I'm way more comfortable around horse babies than I am around human babies, okay? But yeah, it's totally cool. And especially because I get to see him there when he's just born and now he's actually making it to the track and now I get to watch him race, which of course we know doesn't always happen. And this one, I just know he's gonna be a good one. I have to thank one more time the foaling manager, Tom Kugel from the Teague Stables. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah, you certainly owe him a thank you. That was really, really <laughs> awesome. Well, unfortunately we have to take one more break, but when we come back, we still do have our black from the past. We'll also check out what is trending in the harness world. Stick with us when we come back. Off stride is check me out. Check me out is on a break. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer and you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on.
Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week Racing's fastest paced half hour. It's the part of the show now where we take a little walk down memory lane. Our blast from the past this week easily could have also been our OMG segment. We're going to take it back nearly nine years to November of 2011. This matron stakes event for two year old trotting fillies at Dover Downs is truly one of the greatest comeback in our sports history. And we want you to check out the overwhelming favorite and that is, well, check me out. Off stride is check me out. Check me out is on a break on that first turn. They go to the quarter and Paris, Kentucky has the lead. 27 and 4 fifths. Check me out is still galloping and is far back. And catching the pack now. Check me out is about seven or eight off the lead. Has picked up at least 15 lengths. Go by three quarters. 127 and 4 fifths. They're at the top of the stretch, turning for home. Voluptuous Ronda. On the far outside, check me out. They come off the turn. Check me out coming on the outside after Voluptuous Ronda coming through the stretch. Check me out is up to get the lead. Check me out made up 20, 25 lanes to win. First of all, check me out stuns everyone by going off stride. I'm not talking about a couple leg bobbles. I'm talking about she's galloping and galloping and galloping. And then check me out stuns everyone by making up so much ground. What a comeback. She wins in 158. This is the news that everybody in the horse racing business is talking about. It is the Standard Bread Horse Sales Company announcing this year's annual sale. Everybody knows it as Harrisburg Sale, but actually it's not in Harrisburg this year. It's going to be held at the Maryland State Fairgrounds in Timonium. The sale dates are November 3rd through November 7th. So if you want to know more details, all you have to do is go online and type in theblackbook.com. Awesome. Well, if you're already online, you can also give us a shout on social media. You can always find Heather and I on social media on Facebook at Harness Week and on Twitter at PA Harness Week. And if you miss anything in the episode that you'd like to rewatch, maybe the baby full segment, <laughs> check us out on YouTube. You can find our episode as well as all of our previous content there. Before we go, of course, I want to talk about the live racing schedule. So let's go over the dates and times first. The Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. We've got racing Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday with a post time of 12.30 p.m. Sunday post time is 5 p.m. Then at Harris, Philadelphia, the live racing schedule. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, post time 12.25 p.m. The Sunday post time is 12.40 p.m. We want to remind everyone still, we're not supposed to be having fans at the track. I'm so sorry but they can come to our simulcasting outlet to take it in. So not at the fence, not in the stands, but simulcasting outlet, come on out and place your bets. And many of you who've been betting from home throughout the pandemics probably know the websites, but we're gonna remind you anyway, for Harris, Philadelphia, if you wanna bet online, you can go to pabets.tvg.com. And for Pocono, the site is ibetmohegan.com. Again, thank you for being with us for our second to last episode of PA Harness Week. We hope you'll join us back next week for our final episode of the season. Again, I am Britt Purdy, and for Heather Vitale, thanks for being with us on PA Harness Week.